Many immigrant families in Norway have accused Barnabernet of taking away their children without proper justification, citing, in some cases, even cultural differences as the reason. Sagarika Chakraborty was one such parent who fought with the Norwegian authorities for the custody of her children. Weon spoke with Sagarika, and this is her story. In 2007, when Sagarika Chakraborty got married, she moved with her husband to Norway and settled in the city of Stavanger. A few years later, they became a family of four. Sagarika says they were living like a normal family with their two children, until one day their world turned upside down. In 2011, child welfare authorities knocked on their door. तो उसके बाद हस्बैंड को पूछा कि आप ब्रेकफास्ट क्यों नहीं बनाया तो उन्होंने बोला ये थोड़ी ना मेरा काम है मेरा ऑफिस है ये है वो है ये सब बोलना शुरू कर दिया उन्होंने देखा कि हस्बैंड और वाइफ के बीच में थोड़ा झमेला लगा देती हूं मतलब बच्चे लेना बहुत इजी हो जाएगा उसका कंसंट्रेशन हमसे हट जाएगा और उसके बीच में ये लोग बच्चे को फोर्सिबली लेके और हमने देखा कि वो बच्चे को लेके चले जा रहा है मैं तो उसके पीछे पीछे मैं भागना शुरू कर दिया वो लोग गाड़ी लेके जा रही थी हम उसके पीछे भागना शुरू कर दिया और मैं गिर गई As with many aggrieved parents, Chakraborty's troubles started at her son's kindergarten. It was a report of concern from the nursery school that was a red flag for the child welfare services. And just like that, Varna Varnett stepped in and whisked the two children away, questioning Sagarika's ability to raise them. But how can a state-run agency remove children from their biological parents? On what grounds? Well, the, uh, the, the procedure the, that... To understand the legalities involved in the case, we spoke with Surania Ayar, a New Delhi-based lawyer who has been working on a pro bono basis with families facing child protection proceedings abroad. They said about Sagarika that her uh, breastfed three-month-old baby used to look at the care workers when they walked in and therefore it showed that she was not attached to the mother. I mean, it's the, and this is written in black and white in the documents. Uh, you know, in, similarly, in the case of the son, so the care workers would say that, you know, uh, he throws down, he bangs his head on the floor whenever he, his mom comes to pick him up and uh, he fears and rejects, therefore he fears and rejects that after the children were taken into care, they, the uh, authorities continued to give uh, reports about the children. So head banging is alleged to be the evidence of Sagarika's bad mothering. But when the special educator, two months after the children have now been removed from the parents, says that the boy is uh, still he he's head banging, but uh, we found ways if we let him be, uh, it's just his way of playing. The case led to a diplomatic row between India and Norway. The Indian authorities put pressure on the Norwegian embassy in New Delhi, as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Children, Equality and Social Inclusion in Oslo. In Sagarika's case, the reason why the children were sent back was wholly and solely because the government of India took this up as an issue and absolutely insisted that Indian children have to be sent back to India. And if there's any, uh, you know, doubts about the, the parents, then uh, they can be placed in the extended family. Now, Sagarika came back on the understanding that the children would be sent back to India and then, uh, you know, she could, uh, it would be the matter would move from there. Uh, but her husband chose to stay on in Norway and the in-laws refused access to the children. So uh, now she had on her hands a double procedure. I mean, she's going to have to prove to the Indian Child Welfare Authorities that she's a fit mother. And she's also going to have to uh, fight this uh, custody battle with her in-laws family to get the babies back. The children came back in April of 2012 and she was only able to finally get them back in January of the following year. Vindagar is the most important thing because 
पापा वृंदा कारक के पास ही गए थे और जब भी उन्होंने गया वृंदा कारक के पास उन्होंने पहले ही प्रेसिडेंट के साथ मीट मीट करवाया दिल्ली में जाके मम्मी पापा को लेके और बहुत सारे लोग पार्टी लीडर्स एवरीबॉडी केम टू द प्रोटेस्ट सुषमा स्वराज जो बहुत हेल्प किया था उन्होंने प्रोटेस्ट प्रोटेस्ट में शामिल हुआ था और उन्होंने बोला था कि नॉर्वे के खिलाफ बोला था कि ये तो एक किडनैपिंग का बिजनेस है तो बच्चे और मम्मी पापा से उठा लेते हैं तो ये कैसा कंट्री है ये तो एक किडनैपिंग है तो वही चीज़ उन्होंने बहुत मतलब सब लोग हेल्प किया It has been more than a decade since Sagarika got custody of both of her children, but even today, recounting the painful memories of the past is difficult for her, and one can understand why. बहुत इमोशनल चीज़ इसमें जुड़े हुए हैं। कितना मैंने सहना आपको बोल नहीं पाऊँगी मैं। मेरे आँखों में आँसू आ जाते हैं। मैं कंट्रोल नहीं कर पा रही हूँ। Sagarika moved out of Kolkata to earn a livelihood. Today, she works for an information technology company in the national capital region. But she thinks about her children day and night, and manages to speak to them every evening. It's so actually uh, a huge trauma in my life, actually, because मुझे इतना दिन बाद भी मतलब पुराना जो भी है मैंने लड़ाई किया है बच्चे को आने के लिए मतलब अभी त, अभी भी मुझे वैसे ही लड़ाई करना पड़ रहा है पूरा फैमिली का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेने के लिए क्योंकि मेरे पास मेरे हस्बैंड कभी मुझे मेरे साथ कभी कांटेक्ट नहीं किया पैसे भी कभी नहीं दिया है मुझे तो पूरा आई एम अ सोल ब्रेड विनर इन माय फैमिली सो आई एम टेकिंग ऑल द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ माई फैमिली अभी भी लड़की बोलो लड़की बोलो उसको इक्वल समझना बहुत ज़रूरी होता है और सबसे बड़ी बात है शादी हो गया मतलब ये नहीं है कि सिर्फ वो बच्चे पालेंगे और घर का काम करेंगे और उसको कुछ अलग टाइप से उसको मतलब उसके ऊपर बोझ मतलब ऐसे टाइप का उसको देखते हैं इन लॉस फैमिली ऐसे नहीं होना चाहिए मतलब तो मैं चाहती हूँ कि अभी मॉडर्न एज है सब लोग मतलब हस्बैंड वाइफ फैमिली सब सब बहुत बहुत लिबरल होना चाहिए जो उसको सपोर्ट सब लोग सबको सपोर्ट करेंगे ऐसे टाइप का फैमिली होना चाहिए Sagarika's case is not the first or only time Barnavan faced criticism for its approach and actions. In 2015, five children were removed from a Romanian-Norwegian family by the Norwegian Child Welfare Services. The case sparked widespread protests in Norway and Romania. Hundreds of people took to the streets to denounce Barnavan. Eventually in 2016 the family regained custody of their children. 